the freeform lock community has exploded on TikTok and YouTube shorts. But hold on a damn minute, because along with the uptick in people talking about freeform dreadlocks, there's been a hell of a lot of misinformation in the freeform lock galaxy. Dami Boy had to strap on that naughty cape and come untangle this web of naughty lies that has been created uh, on the YouTubes and such. So, you know. Let's set a couple things straight. All right, so boom. All y'all been asking on my main page for a hair tutorial about my freeforms. So boom, I'm gonna keep it real straight. All you need, bro, is this and nothing else. First of all, New Yorkers are gonna New York, man. I'm already distracted by all the lingo my boy is using. All right, so boom. If you wanna get your hair like this, son, grab a bacon, egg, and cheese. Bang, shout, yeah. From the highest rooftop, bomb. End your day with a chopped cheese from Ock, a little bit of Fanto and some Graba, and you set. All right, let me stop fucking around. Let me see what the. Let me keep it real straight. All you need, bro, is this and nothing else. Everybody talking about a, a sponge, a brush. Don't do none of that shit. So feel me? See, I'm going out or whatever, chilling normal day. Why would you buy an Afro pick and shit on the folks that buy the sponge? or do the palm rolling. I don't really see, I, I feel like they're both a dollar 99. I don't think you're really saving anything. Let me see, he just uses an Afro pick. Just be twisting my hair, but don't twist your roots. Don't twist your roots. Criminal just okay. twist the top parts like this. And then you use this and then you pick out your roots. And the reason why you want to pick out your roots is so that your shit won't turn into, oh shit. So, they so that your shit won't turn into dread dread and start hanging. But if so they don't turn into dreadlocks. You twist your hair and you pick it out so you don't get free form dreadlocks. Are we really, I mean, at the end of the day, if you're not freely forming your hair, is it free form dreadlocks? You pick out your roots, it's always gonna be like a, a fro under here so that your shit always gonna stay up. And then when you go to sleep, I don't use a bonnet, none of that. I lay like this, I go like this, and I put my head on the pillow. Same for this side, I go like this, put my head on the pillow. But yeah, that's it for real. I just did this in a minute. That's and if you're twisting your hair and then you're Afro picking your hair so that it comes out, you got like a twisted end Afro. I got a twisted Afro. I, that's what they should call this, a twisted Afro. It's a dope ass hairstyle. He got the, the shape up, push back, but it's not freely forming your hair. So at the end of the day, is it free form dreadlocks? But if you're constantly picking out your locks, you're going to end up with just an Afro with twisted ends. This is not a long term solution. It's a great short term hairstyle, but it's not a long term solution to growing, you know, actual free form, free formed, freely formed dreadlocks. Let's go into the next one. When are you going to do something to your hair? God. Listen to me. Sponge if you want to wear long hair, fine. But you need to go get it braided up. You can't just go around uh, looking. Oh, naughty boy. Uh, who beckons me? <laughs> uh, it's the Afro picker. No. Hey. Let's fix those locks of yours. <laughs> do something to your hair so locking gel God. listen to me Sponge your hair. if you want to wear long hair fine but you need to go get it braided up you can't just go around looking when are you gonna do something to your when hair are you gonna do something to your hair honestly i have heard that so many times in my life so i feel the struggle my mom when i grew my first freeform crown the dyed tips i didn't know what i was doing i was putting shit in my hair all the time and my hair looked a mess and my mom would comment on it every single time but surprisingly growing this second crown which is a lot messier than my first crown to be honest at least every time she sees me it's more like my family grow hair so quick you get that from me your daddy your daddy all of them bald on my side of the family your hair grows so thick. It all depends on what your goals are. If you want to grow freeform locks for the long term, this is a great way to start the process to get that little afro to start locking up. But when you start over twisting your hair like this, uh, when you start picking it out, when you start using the gels and waxes, if you're putting gels and waxes into your hair constantly, and your hair is this matured already, like this far along, all that's gonna do is lock up the gel and waxes into your already formed mature locks. And at this point, it's much, much harder to, to wash out. Um, it's gonna cause dread rock if it's not cleaned out regularly 
Uh, it's going to attract lint. It's going to attract bacteria. It's going to attract mold. It's going to be a breeding ground for just shit that you don't want in your hair. And then when you're constantly picking out your fro underneath and not allowing your locks to actually lock up, your afro is going to keep growing. You're not going to have a well-developed root system for your locks. So you can't ultimately grow freeform dreadlocks. I think a lot of times what's happening now is that if you get dreadlocks and it's not going to the loctician and getting it twisted, that means you're freeforming. But these are just DIY locks, in my opinion, is DIY dreadlocks. Constantly twisting and constantly putting gels and wax in your hair. You know, it's a part of the process, you know. Some people are afraid for their hair to, to drop down. I know early on when I was growing my locks, I was super afraid of this stage because you get so attached to that look that feeling that the hair sticking up and and defying gravity that you're like i don't want to go past this i don't want to go any further i want to lock this in and it's a part of the journey it's a part of the process it's a part of growth um it's a part of change man we can't stay young forever we can't stay in the same job positions forever we can't you know stay in the same like environment forever because that's only impeding on our growth so you know let let it be let it be let it go freely form okay sponge here at the beginning yeah locking gel once a week jesus christ bro you don't need to spend money on gels to grow knots upon your head we have the melanin our hair naturally knots up if you want to get free form dreadlocks and grow into your most natural abundant self if that's the reason you're doing it you don't need to spend money to a corporation you know to have permission to do that man that should make no sense to me that's like living in the ocean and you know buying salt water being a fish and living in the ocean and buying salt water on the regular to to scrub your scales what a motherfucking uh oh uh, down Hell, oh, oh, Terrible analogy, but we think it on the fly, you know. Sponge here in the beginning. I just hope he has a good washing process. Locking gel, it's great in the beginning, but to constantly use it throughout your journey. The more gel you put, the more shit that's in your hair. So your, your, your strands of hair are just slipping and sliding by each other. Your hair locks up when it's clean and dry if you're constantly putting stuff in your hair you're gonna have to wash it out if it's in your hair and it's locking up with your hair best believe that wax and gel is getting locked in your dreadlock i don't know if y'all have seen those videos where people are getting dreadlock transformations and they cut their locks and in the middle of the locks you just see like a bunch of white shit that's inside their locks build up it's natural sebum from your scalp but a lot of times it's also all the products that you've been using that you haven't washed out of your hair properly. That product attracts lint and garbage from all around the area. It sits inside your lock. A little bit of it won't harm you, but over time, it's only gonna weaken the strength of your locks, man. Locking gel once a week, again, sponge. Sponge every single day. Don't use rubber bands at night, don't use a towel, don't use doing too much so using a towel using a spray bottle is doing too much but you're using waxes on your hair um, once a week and you're manipulating your hair and, and you know twisting it with the sponge every single day so just because you're not going to a loctician and getting retwists doesn't mean you're not retwisting your hair regularly you're retwisting your hair every single day so you're not freely forming your locks and uh, his hair is dope this shit is nice long term i don't know if it's going to be a healthy set of locks especially with that much product to use inside of his locks i don't know what his washing routine looks like if he's washing that out regularly don't use a towel brush method it's doing too much these are not free form dreads man these are locks bro <laughs> you're not these are not free form yo man i'm gonna give y'all some do's and don'ts when getting free form dreads and yes, I'm at work. I'm actually on my break, you know what I'm saying? Just like that. All right, one dude is... Well, shout out to him for doing this shit on his lunch break. Much appreciated. Don't wash your hair frequently. Wash your hair every every two to three months. But if you playing sports or anything, you sweating anything like that, I say one time every month. I fully commend that message. All right, so that's Ike from Walmart. Facts. Do not use beeswax on your hair because it will cause buildup in your hair. And the buildup will make your hair stop growing. For real. Exactly. Another do is find a good shampoo and conditioner. And find one. Look, when you find one, make sure on the bottle, make sure it says 
no sulfates on it because sulfates you can look it up sulfates is not good for your hair exactly. so yeah don't do it another don't is don't always put your hands in your hair like don't always be twisting like you can twist your hair every now and then with your hands but like don't do it too often because that will cause breakage in your hair another do is find some oil for your hair like either olive oil exactly you don't need to buy the beeswax if you have natural oils your argan oil your olive oils your jojoba oils you could put that in on an as-needed basis yes a sulfate free shampoo that's all you need a sulfate free shampoo you dilute it and you clean your hair with cold water once a month in the beginning and you know if your hair is too itchy you sweat a lot you could build that up to maybe twice a month and shout out to this dude who literally had to take some time off from his 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 lunch break in order to drop some knowledge for us and i i thank him for that and see there's no one size fits approach when it comes to growing about this hairstyle though let's be real some of y'all are using the term freeform dreadlocks way too loosely i mean you're you're buying gels you're buying waxes you're using afro picks to stop your hair from locking you're paying more to look more natural and that's like buying water in the middle of a damn rainstorm what it just don't make no sense but until the next one you see your boy dami boy make sure you hit that like and subscribe and i'll see you at the next one and drink more water that's that's another cheat code drink more water that's how you get healthy locks up